Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the King in Black omnibus. So without further ado, let's take a look at this book. Okay, and here is the cover of the book, which as you can see has this really awesome imagery of the Venom symbiote over the skeleton of, I guess, a dead Eddie Brock. Here is the spine of the book, and as you can tell, this is a monster of an omnibus, and we have a fitting monstrous deity-like figure on the spine, that being Noel, the god of the symbiotes. And then on the back of the book, we've got some symbiote dragons flying our way, and it says Noel is here. Alright, this omnibus collects King in Black 1 through 5, King in Black Immortal Hulk, Iron Man, Doctor Doom, Black Knight, Marauders, Black Panther, Captain America, Wiccan and Hulkling, Spider-Man, Scream, and Ghost Rider. It also has King in Black, Gwenom vs. Carnage 1 through 3, King in Black, Namor 1 through 5, King in Black, Planet of the Symbiotes 1 through 3, King in Black, Return of the Valkyries 1 through 4, King in Black, Thunderbolts 1 through 3, Symbiote Spider-Man, King in Black 1 through 5, Black Cat, 1 through 3, Daredevil 26 and 27, Deadpool number 10, Fantastic Four number 29 and 30, Guardians of the Galaxy number 10, Miles Morales Spider-Man number 23, Sword number 2 through 4, Savage Avengers number 17 through 19, Spider-Woman number 7 through 8, The Union 1 and 2, Venom 31 through 34, and then also the King in Black Handbook. If it wasn't already obvious how huge this omnibus is and how many stories are collected in it, that should be telling. But what is this omnibus, what is this event, and is this worth picking up? So the threat that this story centers around is this character named Noel, who was first introduced in Donny Cates' Venom series, and he is an ancient and powerful symbiote god who is basically seeking to conquer the universe, not so different than a lot of other big galactic adversaries. And just a little fun fact here, I actually picked up just randomly off the shelf to give it a try back in I'm guessing like 2018, Venom issue 3 of the Donny Cates run, which happened to be the first appearance of Noel, and then later in like 2020 or 2021, I was going through my comic collection and I discovered that this Venom issue 3 was worth much more than I'd bought it for, and I think I sold it for something probably around like $100 or $200, but what I used that money for was to buy a CGC graded copy of the first appearance of Emma Frost, Kitty Pride, and Sebastian Shaw, so to me that was a trade that's worth it because I care much more about those characters and the X-Men than I do about just some symbiote god who was introduced still fairly recently. And of course, Venom and Eddie Brock's Venom specifically, having had a long history with symbiotes, and basically this all being predicated on that Venom Donny Cates run, Eddie Brock also has a large role in this story, and he's sort of central to resolving it. A lot of the story kind of reminded me of the Abnett and Lanning Guardians of the Galaxy run, in kind of just the core theme of it being light versus darkness. And in this, the lore is that, well, Noel has been this epic force of darkness in the universe. Actually, he predates the universe, I think is what is said. And there's also an epic force of light that gets labeled in this book that is actually something that has been around in Marvel Comics for a while, but here they kind of embed it into the lore of light versus darkness. So quintessentially, when you really, really boil the story down, it's basically that. It's will light defeat darkness. But when we expand it, it's also kind of about, you know, Venom and the symbiotes and struggling with loyalty and struggling with kind of Eddie Brock's more villainous past and him trying to confront those things while also being a hero. But he's got a lot of self-doubt about that as he's like standing with all the Avengers, all these people who have done great things when, yeah, he's done some good too, but he can't help but think of all the terrible terrible things that he's also inflicted upon others. His son is also a pretty key player in this story and sort of Eddie trying to shield him from what, you know, his life has been and the things that his life devolves into. But this is Marvel, so, you know, if you're a hero, if you're a villain, you can't really keep your kids out of it. That's not an easy thing to do. Now, there are a lot of really cool and action-packed moments in here, particularly one I really enjoyed was like Thor fighting Noel. I thought that was an amazing fight sequence that they included here. And there's more cool cool fights in here that I won't spoil, and there's also just, you know, people hacking up symbiote dragons with swords and axes and whatnot, and yeah, that's always going to be cool to look on on the page. But when it comes down to it, ultimately, I would not recommend that you pick up this omnibus, and that's for two major reasons. 
So the first reason being that overall, I just kind of didn't feel this event was very satisfying at all. It had pacing issues to me. Some things moved quickly and we weren't able to really, you know, I guess absorb some of the elements of the story and live in this moment where the stakes are so high. And there's a lot of added symbiote lore here. So at the same time, it feels very, very complex in ways. But to me, the central story is a pretty shallow explanation exploration of some of the things that they they wanted to take a look at and it's very possible that this is an unpopular opinion I have and that this story did resonate with a lot more people but it just didn't resonate with me it felt like this event from 2021 shouldn't have such a same old same old feeling that it had you know especially comparing it to other events and maybe what I thought was kind of lacking there overall was character depth and I know that we're like in the midst of this epic scale battle there's things Things going on here there's action but to me so much of that action feels meaningless when I'm not really you know caring so much about the characters that are involved in that action and maybe it's just a product of not having finished that Venom run by Donny Cates but frankly, while it was pretty most of the way through, I was bored at times with some of the story. Now, that being said, while I don't enjoy the writing too much, Ryan Stegman's artwork in this series is impeccable. It's dynamic, it's detailed, it conveys the intense action in such an awesome way, and it's wonderful when you can tell, and here you can kind of tell, that he was having a blast illustrating this book, and he was really into it. So I love that about King and Black. And then we run into the problem that I, I basically have with every event omnibus that comes out where we get all of these other tie-in issues after the main event and there are all these little subplots and it's just like, it's too much like this. It's like overdosing on Marvel subplots for an event that I already wasn't too interested in. And of course, there's some good stuff in here. I mean, there's stories I enjoyed in the subplots with, you know, Spider-Man and Hulkling and Wiccan and all the X-Men stuff, too. That's all fun. But for the majority of it, I, it felt like a chore reading through it rather than something I was doing out of enjoyment, you know? Which, like I said, could just be me. I tend to feel that way about most event omnibuses. And that's kind of my second reason for recommending you not pick this up. I sometimes think event omnibuses are just ultimately doomed to not be well mapped and this one definitely falls into that trap as well. If you're gonna get this omnibus, I would maybe look up an actual reading order for King and Black, which actually I think they have in the back of this book. So I would follow maybe that, choose some of the titles maybe you don't wanna read from those, and then just go forward like that. Like they give us King and Black one through five, and then they give us these like four Venom issues that really help build out context for what happened during the King and Black event. And it's kind of like, hey, you should have included that between the King and Black issues, not after the event. Also, just going back to characters for a moment, like Noel. Why am I supposed to really care about Noel? What is really engaging about him as a character? He's kind of just a cookie cutter villain who they're all like, oh no, he's one of the most powerful villains we've ever faced. And it's like, okay, yeah, power is cool and fun, but if there's nothing really beneath the surface, then I'm not gonna be interested in the character too much. All right, I normally don't like to be too negative about these books but yeah this one just really like I said it didn't resonate for me personally if you like it I'm really glad you enjoyed it but I would love to hear what you guys think so please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on this book thank you all and you have a great rest of your day